and oftentimes we'll mention creative effects like delays, filters, rhythmic gates, and so on. But I have found it to be the case that there is one major difference between the way guitarists approach creative effects and the way people who work primarily in DAWs and plug-in instruments do. And that difference is the way guitarists instinctively understand the power of distortion. Oh, okay, wait, hang on. That sounded super lame. Hang on. Oh, wait, okay, sorry, forgot this. Um, uh, yada, yada, yada. And that's the way guitarists instinctively understand the power of distortion. Distortion makes sometimes boring sounds do exciting things, and maybe my favorite thing about it is that we often can't predict what will happen. We just have to try and see. And that is my favorite place to be, creatively speaking. So today, let's make some music by exploring the unknown of distortion. I'll load Algorithm's default patch, Basic FM Pluck. It's a fairly simple sound with a short decay, so I'll use Pattern Mutator to get a little note sequence going. Once I've got 16 steps worth of notes, I can mutate them. Now let's spice it up with a little distortion. When we say distortion, we're talking about a variety of effects, but all of these effects are about reshaping the waveform of our signal. Whether that's from downsampling and bit crushing a waveform to simplify it, making it sound more harsh, or from amplifying and overdriving our signal until the peaks of our waveform are reshaped and new harmonic overtones are introduced, making it sound more thick. Since this basic FM pluck patch is a pretty pure sound, I'll look to use distortion to make it more harmonically rich. By dragging a Scream 4 distortion underneath algorithm, you'll hear that happen instantly. Scream 4 has several types of distortion it performs, like simple overdrive or tube saturation, to digital crunch, or ring modulation. But I'll introduce one of Scream's fuzz styles, because fuzz distortion introduces a lot of harmonic overtones to my sound, making the simple pluck from algorithm a richer sound. And I'll bring in a delay to give our note pattern a little depth. And then one thing to consider is that just because we've used a distortion doesn't mean we can't use it again. Distorting a distorted sound can push our sound even further. I'll bring in a pulverizer. I can add a little bit more distortion. Or a lot of bit more distortion. And since we have access to it, I'll use the built-in tremor settings to give my sound some pulse too. But I'll dial back the wet-dry control so it's not so overwhelming. None of the decisions I've made so far should be considered right or wrong. I'm just turning knobs and seeing what they do. But already, even after just a few experimental decisions like this, my note sequence has come a long way going from this to this. Now let's take this two-bar repeating note pattern and expand it to have a longer, more developed sort of harmonic chord structure. And of course, I can use the transpose function built into Pattern Mutator to transpose my pattern up or down, like this. But that's just raw transposing. It's not following any key or scale. So I'll bring in a Scales and Chords player beneath that, turn off Chords mode, and set it to a scale. In fact, I'll set it to one of the pentatonic scales. Pentatonic scales have only five notes in them, which work alongside nearly any chords and melodies you might be playing in a key. So by conforming the transposed notes coming out of Pattern Mutator to B-flat minor pentatonic, we'll always end up with a very reliable note pattern that can't really go wrong on us. Let's add another instrument. Now last time I started with a sound that was fairly pure harmonically speaking. So this time I'll go for something that already has some overtones in it, like a bell sound from Clang. 
And for the distortion, I'll actually use a plugin by Waves called Berserk that has its own unique take on distortion. In fact, I'm so new to Berserk that I'm still coming to understand how it all works. And that's a good thing because in creative modes like this, I don't want my familiar experience and habits to divert me away from a new idea. So rather than chase the sound I have in my head, I'll just flip through Berserk presets and see what it does to my bell sound. I like what this patch is doing to my bells, and from the waveform display, I'm getting a hint that this is a type of distortion known as a foldback distortion. Unlike overdriving and clipping distortion, which tries to exceed the available waveform height and ends up maxing out, foldback distortion instead reflects the waveform back down, creating an entirely new waveform shape. Foldback distortions can often sound more harsh and aggressive, and that is certainly true here. One thing Berserk has going for it is an onboard dynamic gate. If I dial in a certain volume threshold and turn up the blend, I can tell Berserk to close off my signal prematurely for a tighter sound. Now my bells have a percussive vibe of a sort of post-apocalyptic Mad Max xylophone. I'll layer a part on top of my warmed, fuzzed-up pattern mutator part that plays off of the same rhythmic pulse. Okay, let's get some drums on this to give it a beat. At this tempo, there's two obvious directions I could go. I could go either with a halftime feel for a sort of hip hop trap boom bap sort of style. Hip hop trap boom bap. Try saying that 10 times fast. Hip hop trap boom bap, hip hop trap. Hip hop trap boom bap, hip hop tripping. Hip hop trap boom bap, hip hop trip. Ah, I give up. But doing this actually makes my note pattern drag and feel kind of sleepy. So let's go the other direction and put something in the double time feel, sort of like a drum and bass style. Without changing the notes at all, the same pattern feels alive and driving. Now let's put something melodic on top of this. Following my theme of modifying simple or traditional sounds, let's go super traditional by bringing in a friction violin section. And for the distortion, we've already used Scream 4 and Pulverizer from Reason. Let's go to one of Reason's less obvious distortion effects, Synchronous. Synchronous is four effects in one, five if you count the level control, with built-in modulation curves that you can use to change key effect parameters over time. If we reset Synchronous to clear it out and activate the distortion only, you'll see we have four types of distortion. Ring mod, lo-fi, and two, which are vaguely named Distortion 1 and Distortion 2, which sound like different flavors of overdrive. We can crank up the distortion and the character knob to drive our violins like they're going through a guitar pedal. But where Synchronous's creative potential really kicks in is that we can draw in modulation curves to change the amount or the character of the distortion over time. So let's make it obvious by going to the extremes. I'll turn down the baseline amount to zero so that nothing is getting distorted unless I tell it to. And I'll turn up the mod control to maximum so that the range of our distortion is determined by the height of the waveforms we draw above. I can draw in a sine wave at a quarter note rate and we'll hear our distortion ramp on and off. Change to a square wave and it has more of a bypass gating effect. I could now mix and match waveform types and the durations to create a distortion that comes and goes in a rhythmic way. What we end up with is a violin part that sounds more like Tom Morello than it does Itzhak Perlman. And for this song idea, that is perfect. Let's finish this up with some bass. Now, one of the curious things about distortion is that it can be used on soft sounds to make them more harsh and aggressive, but it can also be used to round out and re-sculpt sounds that already are aggressive. Take this 808 slap patch on Algorithm, for example. 
This patch already has its own saturation shaper effect in place, which you'll hear even more if I max it out. What you can hear, and even see if we look at the sound on a spectrum waveform, is that we have a low fundamental note, and then we have this cluster of mid-frequency overtones created by algorithms shaper distortion. If I run this, as an example, through another Waves Berserk distortion patch, watch the way this cluster of frequencies is reduced, and how this relative gap before it gets filled in. It fills out the sound and feels more smooth and less buzzy. I'll go back and forth again so we can really hear the difference. Alright, let's record some bass. So we've been taking a fairly extreme example today by making music that has distortion on everything and pretty heavily applied settings too, but you know what? I like where we ended up. Using distortion as an idea starter sends me down creative paths I don't normally tread, and I like that. Guitarists have long understood the power of distortion in sparking riffs and hooks, so if you've been overlooking distortion or forgetting to play around with it, consider this a friendly nudge from one music maker to another.